systems are offline. Hey guys, good morning. This is me, Amber, and I just wanted to say good morning to everybody. Um, I just had my morning coffee, and welcome back to the jungle. <laughs> oh my god. I am just so excited, you guys, because this is going to be the first episode for this year, 2021. I have taken my good break for like two months because there were a lot of things going on uh, personally on my life and it just didn't feel right to like publish anything until I felt like myself. So yeah, I'm, I guess I'm back <laughs> and I'm... There, there's like a lot of things that I really thought about talking here on the podcast because there, there were just so many things happening, even though life is still, you know, still not normal. <laughs> I mean, we're on the road to normalcy. Things are changing a little bit, but, you know, I just wanted to talk about this specific thing. I woke up today, I had like a few weird dreams, and that's the thing about me, I just have like incredibly vivid dreams where I like dream about like monsters, sometimes I dream about like a certain celebrity who just becomes my friend and then my lover, <laughs> and then there are times when I dream about real people who I've never met but I interact with, and it's kind of strange that my mind would like bring to life people I just see on screen and then make them like a part of my life and my dreams. And I like to interpret dreams a lot. Like I usually go to Google for this or like uh, refer to Sigmund Freud's book about dreams, but mostly it's all Google because I don't have the time to <laughs> skin, <laughs> skim and scam. Sk sk Kim and scan um, Freud's books. So I just um, go to Google and like ask like, uh, let's say pencil dream meaning. I will always like put use the word, the phrase dream meaning. And there are a lot of things that our dreams would indicate, but this podcast isn't, isn't about dreams. Actually, I, I, the topic that I wanted to talk about was it's already two minutes, <laughs> almost three minutes, and I've talked about a completely different topic. Um, this is all about that few seconds of bravery that pushes you to do something you're scared of. I don't know what it's exactly called, um, but earlier in 2013 or 14, I think, um... I'd like to start by saying I love Lily Allen so much. I love Lily Allen ever since LDN. I love her so much. Smile was a great song for me when I was dealing with things. And it's just, she just shaped part of my personality. And it is an understatement if I say it's, she didn't raise me. <laughs> Because back, practically, I was raised by music. Most of my thought processes and most of the things that I've gone through in my life was um, narrated or supported by music. And Lily Allen has such a huge impact for me. And then, I think 2014, she released this album called Jesus. And there's this song that I think it's um, the lead single there is Heart Out Here. It's hard, it's hard out here for a bitch it's hard. She has a, she filmed a music video for it and it was talking about like misogyny in the industry um, and there was a part in shooting that music video I watched the because I love her so much I watched like everything and in the making of the video the behind the scenes there's a part where she put up like those foil balloons, foil letter balloons. And it says, Lily Allen has a baggy pussy. So <laughs> I know that's like a strange thing, but I remember just 
that few moments of like stupid bravery just it just keeps on replaying in my head like she did it and she was like fuck it like let's do baggy pussy and um i don't know why but ever since i saw that clip it almost like became my mantra like fuck it let's do baggy pussy and um whenever i've you know stepped in front of a huge crowd or like have done something out of my comfort zone it is usually what i say in my head <laughs> fuck it let's do baggy pussy and um i don't really exactly maybe i should search google a few seconds of bravery okay so i've seen a quote from Benjamin Me, me and it says, um, you know, sometimes all you need is 20 seconds of insane courage, just literally 20 seconds of embarrassing bravery, and I promise you something great will come of it. <laughs> and I, this is so true. It was, um, I've always, I'm always scared. I'm always fucking scared about like fucking up. I'm always scared of like doing something that people would laugh about or something that will be used against me in the future and just make my life terrible. So I'm always scared of that. Like I'm scared of moments where I'm just going to shit myself in front of everybody. And for me, I'm like incredibly introverted. I hate most people <laughs> i don't really like you know talking to other people unless i get paid <laughs> but um the thing is when i do these things i always think about how am i gonna be out of my comfort zone if i just keep on like you know after school i just go home and just like stay at home and that's why this um quarantine although it's different because it's enforced it's forced uh, staying at home. Um, I kind of feel a little okay about it because I've always done this my entire life. I'm just at home and just not, you know, just minding my own business. And I've never been one to be out in public and just go crazy. But there were times when I was just, fuck it, let's do baggy pussy. <laughs> so... There are times that I can note I done this, I've done this like every time I'm I'm doing like an a hosting or emceeing an event, um, I got paid for some of these events and let me just say I hate emceeing like when something goes incredibly, you know, out of the program, you really need to be quick and sharp and witty to just make things flow in the right direction because you're carrying everybody's energy in the entire event. So for me, the thing about emceeing or hosting an event is um, being able to guide everyone in the right direction of the event. Like when I say the right direction, I mean the right mood, still going through the program and just trying to close it up as clean as possible without someone going on stage and snatching off the mic off your hand <laughs> so i've 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 had different experiences with that like i there are trainings when like somebody would you know probably a trainer or like someone who's a guest speaker would like speak out of turn and just like you know say s stupid stuff <laughs> let's just say that and I would always go to, like, you know, make the room laugh and just make it lighter. Because sometimes people have this, they don't know that they would darken up the mood and just, you know, cause, like, something negative. So I always, I've always done that. I've always, like, wanted to do emceeing because I have and had the power to, like, twist any situation around and that's what i look forward to every time I d i've done emceeing and 
yeah, I love it. I think I'm comfortable use, using having a mic in my hand because I can't be a singer. <laughs> That's the only thing I can do with a microphone in front of my hands in front of everybody. So it's close to the dream of being Hannah Montana, but not really. <laughs> and um, yeah, usually when I do these things, I'm just so scared things would go wrong. Like so sometimes I like staying behind a podium because my legs would fucking shake. They would shake. There was one time I gave a speech in front of everybody at school. It's I think it's um an acquaintance party. And I was in front of everybody. I was on stage and my leg was shaking, but I still delivered. So and people noticed it. So <laughs> sometimes I just have to like control my bodily movements when I'm doing MC and stuff. I think it's more about being comfortable in like the specific event and you're going going to mc4 so those are one of the things another thing that i do or have done is this pageant thing that i won and pageants are intense pageants are freaking crazy there's just so much work behind stage that people don't know and that what that is what made me appreciate the art of it even more is because pageants are not just some show show off parade thing where people with beautiful faces would go in front of everybody and say stuff you know there's so much pre preparation that goes into it and i was able to i'm lucky enough to be able to participate on both ends being on backstage and being a contestant so i design um i have designed like backdrops i usually operate the lead wall and this one pageant in our school and it's just so satisfying and nerve-wracking at the same time like i remember when we were doing like because it has to be synchronized everything must be in place must be in order must be according to re what was rehearsed because I display one thing wrong in front of that lead wall and people would freak out. So again, I'm shitting myself every time I'm doing something that involves being in, you know, doing something that may, might be used against me or people may, will make fun of me of. So I always like, it's easier being backstage because I can like manipulate stuff before they appear in front of everybody and i'm so satisfied with my breakfast i keep on burping so yeah i love the feeling that i'm able to just enjoy. and the last one that i did it was really fun because we had this i i don't know if it's called but we have an intercom we had like lapels and this almost like walkie talkie stuff and then we, it's just funny. We're like secret agents, but we're doing a pageant. And I was like, um, um, direct. So we call our director direct. And I was like, um, what's next? What's next? And this, okay, this is, it. um, and then I would hear a request, a different, like what song I should, you know, I mean, it's rehearsed, but sometimes some good, better things would pop during, pop out during the event. And it would just, you know, things like this, they're very flexible. It really is about the moment, so I have to be able to make it happen and just, you know, have the spoon and mix that vibe and just make, make it more sweeter, usually. And, yeah, that's about being backstage, though, but when I'm in front of everybody, it is such a crazy experience, like... I don't want to say it's a bit traumatizing if you experience something that's not like smooth. But when I did the pageant where I was crowned um, Queen of Asian, it was just intense because in the beginning of that pageant, I, I was screwed up. Like my heels are so, I'm just a tall girl. And I, w I was wearing like five or six inches of heels. And then our stage had this little um, thing where it's not like, there was a fuck up on a stage that if you walked the wrong way, you would freaking trip. And it was the time when we were introducing ourselves and it was just, 
I, if I wasn't able to hold on that mic stand, I knew I would fall in front of everybody down below the stage and it would be the most embarrassing thing in my entire life. But I was able to hold the mic stand and I was just like, fuck it. Composure. And then I just talk, talked, grabbed that mic off that stand because it lost its height because I grabbed it too hard. And I don't know, ever since that moment, I just... I just remember like thinking, oh, I'm probably not going to win because, um, you know, I already fucked up and, you know, fuck it. Let's do baggy pussy. Let's just do this. And I was just having fun the entire time and I didn't realize it would translate to the judges that I was just like, I was hopeless already. I was, I mean, not hopeless. I was just, there was no, it's, it was like that moment when I, when I had my embarrassing moment of almost falling off stage made me realize like, okay, maybe the, these thoughts and fears, maybe I should just put them in the back of my head and just do, and just have fun because anyway, I'm not going to win anyway. So just let's give them a show. And then I did everything and just, you know, spoke from my heart. And I was so happy that this is one of the moments in my life where I'm just like, wow, finally something, something surprising because I'm usually like the kind of person who would think ahead and, oh, I know what's going to happen. I know this is what's going to happen. So I'm like, you know, I kind of disappoint myself most of the time because I hope I'm wrong about things, but sometimes I'm almost always right, especially with the bad things that happen in my life. So that's kind of like the mentality, but I've always been trying hard to change it and Usually, I just don't think about things. I just do things now. <laughs> I don't put too much time thinking about high concept ideas now. I just do what feels great and, you know, finish the day, sleep, clean my skin, drink my drinks, my supplements, just, you know, taking care of myself this entire process of this pandemic. And, um, you know, it's not always about the big stuff or like the big events in my life where I have to like use this mantra. Sometimes when I go out in public, um, you know, I recently transitioned and it's just, I have to push myself out of a mental fence just to go out in public and look like myself and be a woman. It's just fucking uncomfortable in the beginning because I would get so much attention. Like I remember these two when I was with my friends and these dudes were like almost in an accident because they were, <laughs> they were staring at me and just like, you know, the attention is intense and I've like, especially with me because I'm a tower and then I would wear heels and it's just, it just looked entirely different. And a lot of people would like inspect me. And that's incredibly uncomfortable because, you know, it's like I always have to push myself out of a mental fence when I'm going out of the house dressed as me, as a trans woman. And it's, it's becoming more comfortable now because, you know, I always just use, fuck it, let's do baggy pussy. And I'm glad I have this mantra to just like push myself and become this little nudge that I need for myself because it's not always like I can hang out with my friends and they could be like my comfort crowd and just, you know, shield myself from people. Sometimes I have to go out alone dressed as who I am. So there are a lot of times that I just, I think this mantra will always stick with me. Like, I mean, I'm, I know some of you have inherent or who are just confident, but for me, and to those who can relate to me that I just don't have that kind of confidence, you know. If you were bullied your entire life for being gay and for looking different, you would know what I'm talking about. Like, being safe on a corner is just the best thing ever. And no one can harm you, no one can hurt you, no one can point and put the spotlight on you and just hurt you. But sometimes, in my head, I'm just always like, what am I going to become if I don't go in front of everybody and say what I want to say and do what I want to do? So I always use that mantra, fuck it, let's do baggy pussy. <laughs> and 
that just makes me a little braver. And to this day in my life, I feel like I'm much braver with things. Sometimes I don't even need to do, fuck it, let's do baggy pussy. Sometimes I just, I just have this wave in my chest where I'm like, you should say this, you should do this. And it's usually in a quiet way, you know? Like, I, w I wouldn't want to brag about, like, the kind stuff that I do because that would mean I'm trying to, like, fish compliments for being a good person. But there's no good person points in this planet. It's just an inherent thing. Like, no one... I don't believe in heaven or hell. I don't believe we're all going to get, like, some post-mortem gift certificate if we are good people or bad people. I just believe that, you know... You are put in this earth, you play a role, and whatever that role is, is just you. You don't really need to fight it too much and just become something else that you're not. So, wow, that took a different turn. And we were talking about baggy pussies here. <laughs> but yeah, I just really want to share this message to everyone that if you are struggling to find an ounce of bravery... Just think of those few minutes, that few se 20 seconds, as according to Benjamin Me um, from We Bought a Zoo. Again, I'm going to say it, you know, sometimes all you need is 20 seconds of insane courage. Just literally 20 seconds of just embarrassing bravery. And I promise you, something great will come of it. And that's the thing about my life, you know, all of these like phenomenal things that happen to my life is caused by embarrassing bravery and um i'm glad i had that kind of um thought process and i wish everyone would be brave i know it's something you can impose to people and um i just really want to say that the braver we are the more change will come and appear in our lives and all my life, I've always been afraid of being stuck. So the key is 20 seconds of embarrassing bravery. <laughs> and that's it for this episode. I hope you guys enjoy the first episode of our 2021. Um, I want to call this season two already. <laughs> and yeah, thank you for still listening to me. I know sometimes I just talk about crazy stuff, but yeah, whatever pops out in my mind. I'm just like a kid. <laughs> And I'm sorry, but yeah, this is me. I'm not going to change for anybody. And yeah, thank you. And sending, I'm just sending love and light and digital warm hugs to everyone who's just struggling right now. Nothing is permanent. No pain is permanent. So if you're ever, if you're ever in a bad spot right now, I just want to remind you, I used to be in like crazy times where I thought I was just going to end up you know, ending myself because things are not going well according to my plan or like it's not going good. So, but right now I'm in a good place and yeah, things will change just like the Taylor Swift song. And you guys better stream Taylor's version of Fearless. <laughs> That's it. Bye. <laughs>